though a controlled demolition seems the only valid explanation for the collapses, the debunkers have brought different arguments against this possibility. The first argument is that it would have been impossible to place the explosives under everyone's eyes. You would take an army of workers, it would take months. So this idea that, you know, some crew dressed in black could sneak in the middle of the night and wire a building like that to be demolished is just, it's absurd. There are, however, different facts to be considered. The first one is that in the months previous to 9-11, a major renovation of the elevator system in both towers was undertaken. From the March 2001 issue of Elevator World, we read, Ace Elevator undertook what was perhaps one of the largest, most sophisticated elevator modernization programs in the industry's history at New York City's prestigious World Trade Center. No one is suggesting that this company had anything to do with the possible planting of explosives. But such an extensive renovation process would have certainly provided the cover for a special team to access the internal structure of the buildings at any given time. As explained by Richard Human, chief electrical engineer for the Twin Towers, the elevator shafts gave direct access to the core columns. I'm very familiar with the interior structure that surrounded the elevator shafts and uh, of course uh, their access to the elevator shafts gave them total access to the surrounding core columns, the interior of the core columns. Secondly, the movement of heavy equipment on floors that were supposedly empty was noticed in the weeks leading up to 9-11. Scott Forbes worked for a financial institution on the 97th floor of the South Tower. It must have been at least um, four to six weeks before 9-11. It was like rebuilding work going on upstairs. The tenants, the people from Aon who had been there were moved somewhere else. The offices were just vacant. And there was a lot of heavy machinery building work going on. It was almost like pneumatic drills and lots of hammering. So much so that the floors were shaking. That's how noticeable it was. It was almost as if uh, something heavy was being moved and then it was being taken off wheels and it was like boom. Our floor underneath literally shook. You could feel the weight above you. William Rodriguez, an employee at the Twin Towers for more than 20 years, recalls a similar experience. As I stood there on the 33rd floor, I heard very strange noises on the 34th floor. I heard very heavy equipment being moved around and it sounded like... Uh, dumpsters with uh, uh, metal wheels being moved around and I got scared because I knew it was an empty floor nobody was supposed to be there as a matter of fact not even the elevators stopped there you have to have a special access key to open the door on the 34th floor thirdly after the 1993 attack bomb sniffing dogs had been adopted in the security system of the Twin Towers but on Thursday September the 6th bomb sniffing dogs were abruptly removed according to a security guard with no apparent reason. And lastly, there was an unprecedented power down in the South Tower on the very weekend before 9-11. For the first time in 30 years, all the security systems in the building had become useless at the same time. People could come and go as they pleased, even in protected areas, without being seen nor recorded by surveillance cameras. The previous weekend there had been a power down. Uh, because of the power down, there was a complete breakdown of security that weekend. We had guided tours coming into uh, secured areas by mistake and nobody picking it up because there's no intrusion alarms or, or anything else. Scott Forbes was also present during the power down. There was a power down in the South Tower on the weekend of the 8th and 9th of September and it wouldn't have just have affected the camera security, it would have affected um, all the secure systems on doors um, for either key locks or the security badges and so on to undo them. They weren't working because they're all powered by electricity, so there was no power, there was no backup system, therefore they were all open. What again was the excuse that the Port Authority gave you, Scott, for this 36-hour period of, of the power being down in the uh, South Tower? Um, the explanation was that there was um, a recabling exercise uh, to increase the bandwidth of networks that were available in the towers. The debunkers are right. It would have been very difficult to bring in the explosives without being noticed. 
with the proper cover story, it could have been done under everyone's eyes, in full daylight, without anybody even questioning what was going on. And as far as the initial impacts, this recent uh, NIST study made an interesting point about World Trade Centers uh, 2. Uh, the film analysis showed that, that it oscillated for about four minutes after it was struck by the airplane, and the oscillation rate was identical to what would be expected for the intact tower. Trade Center towers and most modern buildings are heavily redundant in the sense that uh, the load bearing can be shifted to other members if some of them fail, and we, we saw that happen in this case. Stresses do redistribute, but absent further weakening of the structural members, that distribution is, is limited. It, it happens, the, the structure restabilizes, and unless there's significant further damage, it doesn't progress to a total collapse. For the, the towers to collapse the way we saw them collapse basically implies that the columns simply collapsed into themselves. They telescoped straight down. Uh, steel keeps a lot of its structural integrity, uh, even, even when heated, until you begin to approach the melting point, you, you don't really see a catastrophic loss of strength. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about basically vertical box columns collapsing into themselves, which implies a complete loss of mechanical strength. The top section pushing on the bottom section, it's going to meet equal forces as it goes. Both sections are going to be uh, demolished at the same rate. So by the time you've crushed up 15 stories below it, the top 15 stories are also going to be crushed. And so there's nothing left now to crush the rest of the building. Something of this kind is what we should have seen when the top section of the towers collapsed onto the lower one. The upper and lower sections should have mutually destroyed each other until all the energy is dissipated and the system comes to a rest. Alternatively, as shown in this experiment with two towers made of snow, the top section could have fallen off to the side after the initial collapse. What could not have happened is this. A little tiny chunk of the building can't possibly fall and crush the entire structure below it. This is such a simple, fundamental concept that architects and engineers were astonished in seeing it totally ignored by NIST. This is high school physics, and our whole society is being led to believe that these fundamental laws of physics, hard science, don't apply anymore. But even if we assume that the top section of the tower had enough potential energy to destroy the rest of the structure below, it could not have done so at the speed it did, which was near freefall speed. Assuming that the top section on the left contains enough potential energy to destroy the rest of the tower, and assuming we dropped both upper sections at the same time, which one would hit the ground first? It would be the second, of course. As it finds no obstacles in its path, the section on the right will quickly accelerate to free fall speed and maintain it all the way to the ground. The section on the left instead needs to use some of its energy to destroy the structure below, so it could never achieve free fall speed. In the case of the Twin Towers, however, both upper sections fell with an acceleration close to free fall speed, as if their path had been practically free from obstacles. It took each tower between 10 and 12 seconds to collapse to the ground, while an absolute freefall time would have been 9.2 seconds. In other words, both upper sections of the towers found enough energy to destroy 80,000 tons of healthy structure below while accelerating to near freefall speed. This is, as we have said, absolutely impossible by gravity alone. The law of momentum conservation won't allow it. A building cannot do free fall with a huge structural steel structural system in place to support it. Uh, the Twin Towers could, could not have come straight down through the resistance of 80,000 tons of structural steel at the speed of uh, practically free fall. That just would not happen. If in fact it actually hit and made an impact, it was effectively crushing anything, pushing hard on this core structure below it, the core structure is going to push back equally hard. And that's what's going to cause the top section of the building to slow down. As energy is drained away from the system to deform those members, 
it would slow down the descending mass and cause a descent at less than free fall speed. There is only one way for those buildings to have collapsed at the speed they did. The buildings fall at a speed uh, which can only occur if the structure has been removed, the vertical structure. The same Shyam Sunder from NIST has acknowledged that free fall can only be achieved with the absence of a structure below. Free fall time would be an object that has no uh, structural components below it. But what could have removed the supporting structure below, since the falling section didn't have any extra energy to do so? The fact that it's coming down at free fall says all of the energy is being used to just make it go straight down which means it's coming down through itself and not breaking up the building as it goes, something else has to be clearing the way. The near free fall speed of about 10 seconds has been confirmed by different official sources. The 9-11 Commission wrote that the South Tower collapsed in 10 seconds. Mr. Sunder from NIST has confirmed similar timings. The measurements have indicated that Tower 1 collapsed in about 11 seconds and Tower 2 collapsed in about 9 seconds. Mr. Sunder has also acknowledged that the towers came down practically at free fall speed. As a result, the entire top of the building came down pretty much in free fall. The same admission is present in the official report. Since the stories below the level of collapse initiation provided little resistance, the building section above came down essentially in free fall. At this point, we can pose the following question. Given that the building section above came down essentially in free fall, given that for free fall to occur, no supporting structure must be present, and given that the falling sections didn't have any extra energy to destroy the structure below, can you suggest anything different from some kind of controlled demolition for the removal of the supporting structure, which was necessary for near free fall speed to be achieved? they hope that America grows fearful, retreating from the world and forsaking our friends. They stand against us because we stand in their way. We're not deceived by their pretenses to piety. We have seen their kind before. They're the heirs of all the murderous ideologies of the 20th century. By sacrificing human life to serve their radical visions, by abandoning every value except the will to power, they follow in the path of fascism, Nazism, and totalitarianism. And they will follow that path all the way to where it ends, in history's unmarked grave of discarded lies.